Hello everyone, welcome to Computer Science Principles, Unit 1, Lesson 9, where we're going to be talking about lossless compression. So previous lessons we spoke about um, analog sampling, uh, we spoke about um, images, uh, we spoke about sound and how sampling increases the size of an image and how sampling increases the size of a song. Uh, well, today we're going to be talking about the ways we can compress those files to try and reduce the size of the, of the file once it's stored. So things we're going to be using today for today's lesson, so over in Unit 9, uh, less, sorry, over on Lesson 9 in Google Classroom, we have our PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to be presenting to you now. We have a video that we're going to be watching as part of the PowerPoint presentation. If the video doesn't come out very well or if you can't hear it, uh, go ahead and use this link for the video and watch it instead. And then we have the link for our code.org activities that we're going to do today. Okay, so lossless compression. So our warm-up for today, we've got three abbreviations here that I'm sure you've used frequently, if not today, in text messages. So LOL, uh, I've heard two different um, definitions to this. Lots of laugh and laugh out loud, so whichever one that is. Uh, TY, I'm guessing is thank you and see you soon is obviously see you soon. Uh, what other abbreviations could you add to this list? So take a minute and think about that. Um, a couple that I can think of is BRB for Be Right Back and TTYL, Talk To You Later. Um, I'm sure you can all think of some extra abbreviations that you can add to that list. So why, why, why might we use abbreviations when sending the messages? And what are the advantages? So you've got your phone in your hand here. You're typing away with your two thumbs. Um, it's a lot easier to type LOL than laugh out loud or BRB instead of be right back. Um, takes up, uh, it's easier. So as far as um, sending a text message, it's, um, it's more advantageous because it's easier and quicker to type. <clears throat> advantages outside of text messages when you could use abbreviations um, you think of abbreviations if you're writing something down uh, text shorthand something like that it's again it's quicker to write abbreviations and particularly in computer science abbreviations are used a lot abbreviations and acronyms are used a lot because computer scientists love long and complicated uh, descriptions and words and names so we use abbreviations a lot to make um, uh, to simplify the written and uh, sometimes reading as well uh, um, versions of, of the um, longer titles and longer names so uh, it doesn't say anything on here about disadvantages but disadvantage of an abbreviation is you have to know what that abbreviation means um, but I would say that's the only disadvantage and you know as you start using uh, as you as you become introduced to a new technology like text messaging for instance you'll you'll pick up on those um, abbreviations pretty quickly and what they mean so today's activity <clears throat> here's a string of text pitter patter pitter patter listen to the rain pitter patter pitter patter on the window pane uh, we've replaced the spaces with underlines. Um, you, will, you will sometimes see that in computer science. Um, you will see that more so, and just as a side note here, you'll see that more so in computer file names. And that dates back to the olden days when um, we used something called 8.3 file name conventions, where in Windows and in DOS, the so DOS was the precursor to Windows. Uh, a file name could only be a maximum of eight characters and then a period and then a three letter extension. So back in those days, you couldn't have anything longer than eight, eight dot three. So eight characters and then a dot, then a three. And we could, certainly couldn't have spaces and file names as well. So that's why you'll see a lot of people use underscores instead of spaces, just because that's what they're, they're used to. And I do it a lot as well when I'm creating files. 
um, saving documents I'll use underscores instead of spaces just because that's what I'm used to when spaces can make life interesting when you have it in a file name so you know just a little side note there on underscores so we've got a text compression on the left here so pitter patter pitter patter listen to the rain pitter patter pitter patter on the window pane so and then over on the right here we have a kind of a, a compressed version of that so we've replaced certain collection of letters or collection of characters with pictures so how is this message the same as the first what actually gets sent to my friend so over on the right here we have a key we know that a sunshine means the an umbrella means t -t -t. snowman means pit and then an umbrella so an umbrella is t -t -t. so snowman means pitter I'm not sure what that is supposed to be it's like uh, no idea but whatever it is that's a pa and an umbrella and we know a pa is oh, so we know an umbrella is titter so that symbol there is going to mean patter and then the star symbol is going to be snowman unknown symbol snowman unknown symbol which is going to be pitter patter so star means pitter patter so reading this across here we've got a star which is pitter patter listen to the rain pitter patter on the window pane so now we have a much shorter string of text with um, images which represent longer it's more like a variable so um, you know an image that represents something else so how is the first message the same as how is the sec how is this message the same as the first it is exactly the same what actually gets sent to my friend so if we if this is the message that we get sent that you're sending to your friend with a string of text in we'd have to send two things one the actual message which is this first section here so a star listen to sunshine rain star on sunshine window pane but then we've also got to send the key so they know what the definitions are of the various um, text replacements characters that we've used so we need to send two things here so let's go and navigate out to code studio lesson 9 level 2 and we're going to try to compress the text so over on this link here once you're in there this is where we are so so wake me up when it's all over when I'm wiser and I'm older all the time I was finding myself and I didn't know I was lost don't didn't know I was lost didn't know I was lost didn't know I was lost didn't know didn't know didn't know so if you haven't realized that is a song and um, we're actually gonna we'll have a video of uh, from the artist in one of the upcoming slides I don't think we missed it did we um, no it's it's a little bit further on so let's take a look so go to level lesson two try to compress the text so what we sent to our friend was the compressed it string and as well as the dictionary so the dictionary was the uh, the mapping of what the compressed character was and how it mapped uh, what, what the substituted character was and what text that that character mapped back to so how let's go and refresh this one from code.org look for the pattern repeated words or phrases in the text enter the pattern you see in the dictionary on the right as you type entries into the dictionary the symbol for the entry is inserted into the text in place of the pattern so if we let's do this one first all right so our first character 
we can replace anything that's underscore with looks like the sunshine now we know an underscore is just one character so it's not really worth replacing one character with another it's not going to give us any kind of compression so let's do a search for what is something that's in repeated in here a lot uh, I was lost so let's say I was lost we've got our compressed text size. well let's let's delete this so we can see what our full compressed text size is so our compressed text size is 240 bytes now remember one character equals one byte one byte is eight bits one character equals eight bits equals one byte so we've got 240 characters in here right now we've got no dictionary when we send a compressed string we also have to send a dictionary as well so ideally what we'd be looking for is a compressed string plus dictionary size which is less bytes than the initial string so we're looking for a dictionary and a compressed text size of less than 240 bytes so going back to the underscore you can see right now it actually is the file being sent would actually be 242 bytes so we're actually we've got negative compression there so you wouldn't just want to replace one character so let's go back to the I was lost so I was lost so what do we got here we have 204 bytes with 11 bytes uh, dictionary so we've got 240 bytes original so we've got a compression of 10.42 percent so that's pretty good 10 percent compression already and all we did was one sentence uh, so let's see if we can do some more here um, I didn't know I didn't didn't did did not no what have we got there so now we're up to almost almost a quarter almost a quarter compression um right so what we could also do is um didn't no Now you can see it's it has included the snowman, which is inside of the umbrella here. We're now mixing the snowman and the umbrella together to uh, compress. So now we're up to 32%. Uh, what else can we do? So wake me up when it's all over, when I'm wiser and I'm older. Um, all this time I was... So I don't see any more duplication here. So basically what we're doing is we are getting rid of duplicate data and referencing it instead with a one byte character to reduce the size so what else have we got is I don't see any other duplication so wake me up when it's all over when I'm wiser and I'm older all this time I was finding myself and no okay so I think we've probably maxed out a compression for well no I say that we could do something like this we could replace with our strange looking symbols again we could do something basic like one word and so what do we get there we were at 32.92 percent and all we did was compress I guess two words there two words so we've got a, a little bit more compression going on there okay so go ahead and play with play with the compression here um, try to compress the text as best as you can see if you can beat my 32 percent compression and what's the next what's the next slide we want to do so make note of the compression ratio so you know the diagram uh, the image here shows 25.40 percent see if you can get it higher than my 32 percent or equal to my 32 percent um, and then come back so go ahead pause this come back once you've had a play with it and then we'll continue on
Okay, so prompts, what strategies are you using to compress your sample text? Which ones seem which ones seem most successful? So going back to uh, text compression again. Um, the most successful compression you can do is by replacing the most repeated phrase or the most repeated group of text. Um, which I think we managed to find. So there's basically a couple of repeated phrases. I didn't know. That's repeated a lot. Uh, didn't know is repeated a couple of times. Um, uh, I was lost. I think I was lost. I think we spoke about that one. That was repeated a couple of times. And it was really the first it was this piece here that didn't really have a lot of repetition. So what strategy are you using to compress your sample text? Which ones seem the most successful? Um, you compress or, or do the replacement, so the symbol substitution for the most repeated phrases and characters, but all but only characters that are repeated, um, or only groups of characters. You wouldn't want to do a, a replacement like in the first example where we replaced the underscore with one symbol and we saw that it actually increased the size of the text. You wouldn't want to compress based on the presence of one sim single character. You would want to compress or substitute based on the presence of a group, a collection of characters together. <clears throat> and here is a video from Aloha. And I'm sure you know the song. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Remember the link for this is in... Google Classroom, so if this doesn't come out or you can't hear it, go ahead and play it in Google Classroom. My name is Aloe Black. I'm a singer, a songwriter, and entertainer. When it became more and more important for artists to have a presence on the internet, I, I quickly developed the skill to you know, build a website and get online, use my knowledge of coding to make it so that people could learn more about our music. Every bit of data or information can be stored digitally. Whether it's numbers, text, pictures, music, or video, all of it can be represented digitally. That means the information can be represented by electrical signals that are on or off, or as ones and zeros, so to speak. But representing information in ones and zeros can take up a lot of space. For example, if you wanted to store a three-minute song digitally, it would take up over 30 megabytes of space. A one-hour HD video would take 800 gigabytes. In the real world, digital information is compressed to take up less space. A 30 megabyte song can be compressed down to three megabytes. An hour long video can be compressed from 800 gigabytes down to just one gigabyte. Sometimes compression is lossy, which means that to save some space, some of the information is thrown away. For example, an image can be compressed to a lower resolution to lose some detail. Lossy compression is useful because in many cases, the human eye or ear can't even notice the details that are being lost. When you compress data without losing any details, that's called lossless compression. This means the compressed data can be decompressed back into the exact original. One way of doing lossless compression is to find patterns in the data you're trying to compress. As an extreme example, imagine a book about dogs with hundreds of pages using only one word. Each page just says dog, 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 over and over a million times. Instead of writing it all out, you could just store the pattern, dog, times one million. Now that's a silly example, but let's look at a more real example. Instead of a book, imagine the lyrics of a song. If a single word or phrase is repeated a lot, you can store that once and then reuse it without repeating the data. Let's see how this works with a simple text compression widget. This widget lets you experiment with compressing text. You want to represent the original text with as few bytes as possible. The widget lets you try compressing different ways and see it as it happens. Let's see how it works. The widget shows you some text to compress. In this example, lyrics to one of Aloe Black's songs. In the dictionary area, you can type patterns you see in the text. For now, let's just look for words that repeat. 
As you type in the dictionary area, a single symbol would be substituted in the main text area. In the example here, you can see each occurrence of the words I was has been replaced with the symbol of a sun, and I'm has been replaced with an umbrella. If you sent the compressed version of the lyrics to someone, you'd also have to send along the dictionary so that they could reconstruct the original text. So the question is, is the total number of bytes in the compressed text plus the bytes in the dictionary less than the number of bytes in the original text? The answer is yes for our current example, and the widget shows you how it's calculated. We assume that every character that needs to be sent takes one byte. So the display shows the compressed version of the lyrics with the symbols substituted in it has 216 bytes, or characters. It also shows the number of bytes in the dictionary as 10. This is to store the words I was and I'm, also the symbols that represent those patterns. This gives us a total of 226 bytes. We can see that the original text had 240 characters or bytes, so we reduced the bytes needed to represent the poem by 14 bytes or 5.8%. Not a bad start. Looking for words that repeat is a good start, but you can look for other patterns. Sometimes a repeating pattern could be a subpart of a word or many words. Here's where it really gets cool. You can find patterns that include dictionary symbols you just made. For example, we replace words I was with a sun symbol. But now you can also see that a new pattern, didn't know, sun symbol, lost. You can type this in the dictionary too. As a side note, to enter the sun symbol, you need to copy and paste it, unless your keyboard has a sun on it. With that little change, we're now up to 26% compression. Try it yourself and see if you can do better. The repetition in a song lyric or poem is obvious, but really any form of information can have repetition or patterns in it. They're just not as obvious. For example, an outdoors photo can have a blue sky, and instead of storing every single blue pixel, that can be compressed. With the amount of information that's digitized and sent around the internet every day, there are much fancier ways to compress the data. Data compression is now built into how every picture or song or movie is stored and almost every web page you visit is compressed as it's sent to your device. All these compression algorithms have one thing in common. They all aim to represent the information in the smallest format possible, in a way that can be decompressed to reconstruct the original, or at least something close to it. Okay, so two concepts that we spoke of that that was raised in the video there, um, lossy compression and lossless compression. So think of it as lossy uh, means information is lost, and you're referring back to the image there of the mountain. Um, you know, data within the image itself, some of it was lost, but it's undetectable to the human eye, and likewise in music you can lose some of the information. So the sampling, if your sampling rate is way, way, way too high, um, it's going to be in, not distinguishable to the human ear. So we can lose some of the information out of, out of analog data, out of the song, out of the image, and it'll be undetectable to us. Now, lossless compression on the other side, nothing is lost, uh, uh, which is the opposite kind of compression, nothing is lost. So we don't lose any of the data in there because it's important we don't and things like text would have to use lossless compression because if you say the string that we're looking at on the screen here if half the letters were missing you wouldn't know what it meant anymore and there's no way to get that information back um, so that's why we that's why we use things like uh, lossless compression on, on text uh, based data um, and lossy compression on analog based data like images and and music Um, so go ahead, go back to the activity, and if you, you know, we can play with this string that we have here, or you can go ahead and go and look at some of these other strings that we have here. So I need a dollar. Um, let's go ahead and dollar. There's lots of dollars in there. 
So we'll start off with that, we can compress the one word there and we've just gained 17% compression. So go ahead and play with some of the other string sections we have here uh, or you can write your own. So we can do a, um, now here's an example of something. Um, the quick brown box jumped over the over the lazy hen. I think that is the uh, phrase that uses every single letter on the keyboard once. So this would not be a good phrase to try and do any compression against because nothing's repeated in here other than space I guess uh, but you again you wouldn't want to compress space because it's just one single word. Um, it's one single character and you'd be replacing that one single character with two characters you know the the dictionary value of space and the character that has been replaced with so um, something like this would not be compressible and so just bear that in mind text based files text based data for the most part is very very compressible and um, you see well yeah so it is very very compressible um, you could open a four kilobyte file so remember a one byte is one character so uh, one kilobyte is 100 characters um, you could open a four kilobyte file which would be 400 characters and it could be uh, pages and pages of data because of the because of the compression that's been used on it so go ahead and play with some of the other uh, phrases here or go ahead and type your own text and be looking for text you predict will be easy to compress and text you will predict will be difficult so there's an example of the difficult text that's the text that's difficult to compress um, this you might think that might either be easy to compress or difficult to compress. So if we could do an A, here we get lots of sunshines there. But if we did an AA, we've now got 47% compression. If we did an AAA, we got 62, four A's, five, 76, 78, 80%. Ah, there we go. So now see the compression ratio is going down because of the size of the dictionary so 79 75 76 75 73 79 75 so yeah that's that's a quite a fun example actually um all right so you yeah, go ahead and play with those uh pause the video and then come back when you when you've um you know played with some of the easy and difficult uh, compression examples okay so here we have choose an easy message and a difficult message for you to attempt to compress compress the easy message as much as you can compress the difficult message as much as you can so you were you were just looking at doing that um, the difficult message let's go back and see if we can find one of these difficult messages um, I know the lady swallowed a bit how absurd she swallowed a bird swallowed a bird uh, that's got a little bit of um, duplication in there so um, I she sells she sells on the seashore the shells she sells the seashells I'm sure that one's got a lot of repetition in there so easy to to uh, compress a a tutor who tutored the flute tried to tutor two tutors to toot. Said the tutor their tutor, it's harder to toot or tutor to tutors to toot. That's a bit of a tongue twister. That's a fun one, actually. Um, that one's going to be relatively easy to compress because there's lots of duplication. Um, and then you need a dollar. That's going to have a little bit of duplication in there. So, yeah, let's go back to my difficult example. You know, it's going to be almost impossible to encrypt there uh, to um, compress that any further all right to wrap up for today what made some messages easier to compress than others and what made some messages more difficult to compress than others well we know that the more duplication that a message has the easier it is to compress now as well as how much duplication that a message has 
it's how easily noticeable that duplication is. So, you know, as as humans, when we're reading it, we typically would um, read it at word level. So we'd be looking for collections of words, one or more words or groups of words that are easy to compress. Um, however, um, if you think of you know, outside of groups of uh, words or groups of words, let's go back to an example here. Maybe there's a, a lot of duplication between the words. So um, something like the wine underscore and H, maybe you might not have a words duplicated but you may have uh, beginnings of one the space and the beginning and the, uh, the sorry the ends of one the space and the beginnings of other now you know that's still uh, repetition it could still be duplicated uh, and uh, replaced with a symbol but for the human eye it's more difficult to uh, to visualize to see that than what it is a, a full word and then what made messages more difficult to compress than others well lack of duplication or lack of apparent duplication, um, having to spend time or more time reading and processing the data to try and find groups of um, text that were re that were um, duplicated in order for to compress. So losses compression, a process for reducing the number of bits. Remember your bits is ones and zeros. That is fundamentally what gets stored on your disk or your USB drive. It's binary ones and binary zeros. So back in the olden days, the magnetic um, hard drives, it would be uh, a magnetic one or a magnetic zero. Um, you know, and, and the head would go across the hard drive and it would detect whether the magnetism was set for that bit or not. So that's, you know, that's basically what we're looking at there for hard drives. Um, so a process of reducing the number of bits needed to represent something without losing any information. Lossless, not losing anything. Lossless, so not losing any information. The process is reversible. So you can compress something and decompress it in, it, in the, the final form after decompression is exactly the same as it was prior to your compressing it, about down to the, about down to the bit, exactly the same. And I thought I was going to talk about lossy compression there, but I guess that's our next um, our next lesson. So thank you all today. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson and you learned something useful. Uh, tomorrow, or tomorrow's next lesson, the next lesson, we'll be talking about, we'll be continuing on with compression, and we'll be talking about lossy compression, which is the compression of analog data uh, where pieces of the data are actually lost during the compression process or discarded during the compression process. Okay, I'll speak to you again tomorrow.